this is all of the work that I had done. This is me getting off of work, driving to Chattanooga to do shows and going to work the next day or driving to Asheville, driving or driving to Mobile, Alabama, all of the stuff that I had done up until that point, this was me, this was something for me going, you're doing the right thing. A lot of work goes into a short late night stand-up set. Join me, J.P. Buck, as I spotlight the comedians who came up with some of my favorite coin sets. This is The Setup. Please welcome the very funny Dulce Sloan. So I think we had met at Bridgetown, and then we had met in 2015. We met at Bridgetown, and I think I saw you again at JFL. Yep. I'm very bad with names. Very bad with names. So you had called me and asked me to be a part of like a couple months later, I was still back in Atlanta. You had called me to do a showcase for Turner at Flappers. Mm -hmm. And you're like, hey, don't say this is JP. And I was like, hello. I had no clue who the hell was on my phone. None, <laughs> not an not a inkling of who the hell was on my phone. And so you're like, yeah, when you do this showcase for Turner, I was like, okay. And so I had just been out there the week before to do stand up for diversity. And it's like, two, like, I just quit my day job. Like, I was like, Jesus, what am I going to do? I'm a ding dong. I had no clue that you were looking at, get, like, I was in, I was auditioning basically to do a late night set. None, nothing, <laughs> none, no clue I'm a ding dong. So my manager calls me at the end of January and he's like, hey, listen, just heard from JP. I was like, oh, that's nice. And he's like, he's like, are you sitting down? I was like, I can be. And he was like, so you're doing Conan? And I was like, yeah. He's like, in two weeks. And I was like, what? The set that I had in mind when I was doing my set, I was like, I just need to be this good. And I'll be, it's Solomon Giorgio's set. That's the set I had in my mind when I was getting ready for this. And he did it a year before me. Um, but I was like, and I had never met Solomon before because I would moved to LA yet. And now me and him are really good friends. But I remember seeing him, like everybody, I remember everybody talking in Atlanta, talking about Solomon's set. And that's the set that I had in mind. And I was like, I just need to be this good. And then he ended up, he, he posted it after I did it. He was like, you know, this is the best way to celebrate my one year anniversary of me doing Conan. And he posted my set and I was like, ah! Ah! shout out to your hairdresser who did my Afro. We saw the hairdresser, me and my manager looked at each other and we see this white woman standing there and he was like, <laughs> uh -huh. can you style an afro? And she goes, I learned how to do hair in the seventies. And I was like, she's fine. She's fine. <laughs> I want to give uh, credit to whoever, oh, I might cry. I don't know who the stage hand was who opened the curtain and hand me the microphone, but when I finally got back there and I was just like, okay. And he just, he's holding the microphone, he's holding the curtain and he goes, you got this, done this a thousand times. You're fine, you know your markets. And I don't know who this man is, but I will give him a baby if he asks me. Like that, <laughs> he, he kind of like, kind of knocked me back into place. And I was like, ah, I'll give him a kid if he asks me, that's all I'm saying. I know y'all are wondering, why can I see this big chick's bra? <laughs> simple question, simple answer. This bra was a hundred dollars. <laughs> That's it. Because if I pay a hundred dollars for anything, you're gonna see it. <laughs> my mother asked me to wear high-waisted pants. Uh, so my tummy did not show. I did not care. She said, but it, it'll give, she said it'll bring more emphasis. She said, if there's the, she said, if the right skin is showing, then you'll bring emphasis to where you want to bring emphasis to. You're dressing in this way that has people thinking and questioning something, and you are answering that question right away. It's me going, listen, you see these titties? They out here. Take it in. Breathe them in. Live in it. And it was just me kind of signaling, like, listen, I'm having fun. Listen, this is a great opportunity. And, you know, y'all are enjoying the show, but we finna have fun. And that's what I wanted to convey because the thing is, if I'm not having fun, they sure not gonna have no fun. I always got an issue with gay men grabbing my boobs, especially at brunch. <laughs> You're sitting there drinking a mimosa. 
All of a sudden, boom, gay man's hand right here. <laughs> pulsing. <laughs> Looking you in the face going, oh girl, it's all right, I'm gay. <laughs> That's why you can't do it. Because <laughs> no one puts the keys in a Lamborghini, starts the car and gets out. <laughs> So if you grab my boob, you're having sex with me, gay man. That's a TV-friendly version of that joke. Yes. The version that you've been doing in clubs and festivals, which is not TV clean. No. You do use a different word. You use the F word in that no. joke. We have to make it TV-friendly, period. But we didn't lose... We didn't lose the essence of the joke just because I had to say sex instead of Like, that didn't... Mm -hmm. I didn't lose anything from it. It's not gay men grabbing my boobs. I got white women putting their hands in my afros. <laughs> See a couple perpetrators in the room. <laughs> Cause they're not classy when they put their hand in your afro. They don't want to stay on the perimeter of the afro. She don't want to keep it Christian, no. <laughs> she takes a whole hand, goes straight to the scalp, <laughs> shake it back and forth, and then exits your afro with this jellyfish action. <laughs> while she's looking at her friend going, Lauren, it's so soft. <laughs> it's like a poodle, it's so soft. <laughs> poodle, really? <laughs> Not rubbing my fingers through your blonde hair going, ooh, it's like a golden retriever. It's <laughs> rude. I love your line at the beginning of keeping it Christian. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things to say. I love that. It's it, it obviously it's it does it doesn't really make sense in that in what you're saying. However, it's such a fun thing to hear. Yes. And like I, I just and it's like the it's just it's really it adds so much to the joke. You know, out here just keeping a Christian. You know, it's so <laughs> funny to me, <laughs> and it's a ridiculous <laughs> statement because people go. What does Christianity have to do yeah. with her hair? That's the point. It's ridiculous. It's a joke. It makes me happy. But <laughs> I would, when I started doing that line in that bit, I always got a bigger laugh than whatever I was saying before. How'd you settle on Lauren? I came up with that joke because there was one time at the, when Atlanta had an improv, um, this woman comes up to me after the show and says very like drunk like 50 something year old white lady and she's <laughs> yelling at her friend lauren she's just like adelaide i was like what's happening and she's like oh she's like you just remind me of the woman who raised me and i was like i didn't need any of that and it was her trying to touch my hair and all of this mm. other goofy nonsense and her husband just comes out of nowhere she's like i'm so sorry i'm so sorry she didn't, because when he, because she was talking to me, trying to touch my hair, so I'm dodging that. And she calls Lauren over, and then Lauren's like, I don't think you should be. She's like, no, it's okay. No, like, Lauren, I don't know. And then she and her husband's kind of like, hey, come on. And it's like, oh, my, you remind me of the lady who raised me. And her husband goes, all right, got to go. And then just, yet, like, cartoon Sandman on the Apollo just yanks this woman back. <laughs> and that's how I kind of came up with that whole bit. Um because her friend's was name was actually Lauren. I'm just Lauren, like, okay. I've had white women come up to me and go, oh my God, is that why that lady at my job doesn't like me? And I go, yes, because you keep touching, quit touching her, but touching her hair. But she said, but it's different all the time. Fine, that doesn't mean you need to touch it. And then men specifically, usually white men going, that doesn't happen to you. I went, what? Like people don't come up and touch your hair. I was like, people touch women all the time, all the time. There's always some dude skirting past you going, excuse me, putting a hand on the small of your back or somewhere on you. People touch women all the time. And then people touch black women's hair all the time. So the fact that I had men coming up to me going, that's not happening to you. I'm like, yes, yes it is. It was always the craziest reaction. So I either got white women apologizing or white men saying to me, this didn't happen. So I was like, okay, I have to put this joke in this set. Great. Thank you. That's hilarious. Thank you so much. Thank you. Full Slam, ladies and gentlemen. He was 
just saying how funny I was. And he was just like, if you need anything, you know, let us know. If you ever want to come back on the show, let us know. And I was like, he didn't have to say that. So I knew it was Jen. He was, but he was just telling me, he's like, you're so funny. And I really enjoyed watching you. And I was like, oh man, like I just, I didn't expect him to say all that stuff. So when I walked off stage, I was like, I just did Conan. And like, that's when I let everything hit me. <laughs> that's when everybody got to know who I was. I've done two pilots. I've had, I just, there's, I'm doing a movie that, I just did a movie this year and it's coming out in November. Conan was kind of the springboard for everything. So I'm so thankful to y'all for just being supportive of me. It's a small little like calling card for you, but I just knew that this was like starting an unstoppable force. <laughs> and I'm so happy just to see what you've done. I should have been fired if I didn't book you. That's all I can say. Oh, thank you. Uh, it was the easiest, like this easiest decision when Reggie emailed me. I was like, oh yeah, okay, <laughs> let's do this. Oh, thank you. <laughs>